Hello, investors. It's Don Vandenborg, Senior Portfolio Manager with Revere Asset Management. Today is Tuesday, August 30th, 521 p.m. Eastern Time, coming to you from St. Augustine Beach, Florida, with tonight's Revere Market Insight video. State of the market, we are in a correction. This has been confirmed over the last two days after the big move down, after Jerome Powell's hawkish speech this past Friday from Jackson Hole. You can see over here in the trend gauge, uh, leading stock still flagged as neutral with the red arrow. Short term, uh, we broke decisively below the 21-day exponential moving average on Friday with Jerome and uh, all five of the major indexes below there. That's our short-term indicator. Medium term, we downgraded today from uptrend to neutral as we lost the 50-day moving average on the three big cap indexes. And long-term, rejected about a month ago into the 200-day moving average. Uh, never got back above it, so still uh, down since April 14th. Uh, when we decisively broke below the 200-day moving average. So not a good sign here, a lot of deterioration on the indexes. Uh, leading stocks at best holding up, going sideways. Uh, when you're fighting the market trend, this is why you need the M in market in your favor because 75% of stocks will follow the overall trend of the market. So what just happened today, unfortunately, third day down as I mentioned, the big cap, three big cap indexes, the Dow, the NASDAQ 100, and the S&P 500 closing below their 50-day moving average. Our G6 growth index down 1.6%, S&P down 1.1%, NASDAQ 100 down 1.1%, Dow down a percent, mid-caps down 1.4%, Russell down 1.5%, global diversified 60-40 stock and bond down 0.57%, in-house here, protection down 0.75%. So let's take a look at some indexes, but first let's take a look at why we do what we do here at Revere. And really it all starts with, you know what chart I'm going to show you. This chart here, if you're new, I show this chart just about every video. I post it on Twitter all the time. This is the last 13 bear markets. Why we do what we do here at Revere is we've had some very close friends and family members get absolutely devastated headed into retirement at some very inopportune periods in their lifetime because they had their money with advisors that did not protect the downside. I'm speaking specifically about this 50.5% uh, drawdown when the tech bubble burst and then again this 58% drawdown with the financial crisis. Did we recover from these? Yes, we did. But if you're headed into retirement and you were counting on having uh, say $2 million and then all of a sudden uh, you get to retirement and you have half of that or less than half of that. How's that going to impact your outlook? That's why we do what we do here at Revere. Six severe bear markets since 1968. On average down 44.5%. You need an 80% recovery to get back to even. Sometimes you just run out of time. This is just a negative sequence of returns is what this concept is. And a sequence of returns is uh, the idea that the markets return between 8 and 9% annually, but they don't give it to you every year. You never know what you're going to get on any individual basis. We had a client come over uh, recently this year who had, he talked to us, was talking to another advisor. The other advisor told him, I just add 8% uh, onto your current balance for when you retire later in the year. Sure, uh, just add 8%. It's that simple. Well, what ended up happening was, Luckily, he went with us, uh, or he'd have been looking at 20% uh, lower at this time. So uh, this is why we protect. And it, it, we're not fear mongers, okay? Let me explain. We look for we look for how the markets are acting, how individual stocks are acting, and then we react accordingly. This last November is an example of a perfectly uptrending market. You've got your green 21-day lower term or short-term moving average above the medium-term 50-day moving average and both of those above the long-term 200-day moving average and all the indexes are trending above there. That's a healthy market. When you start to roll over, go below these indexes, go sideways, we take a little bit off the table. If you really start to break down, the slope of those lines will roll over and if you break the 200-day moving average, that's where we get maximally defensive. 
uh, as you can see the big we chopped a little bit February and March back above and below the 200 day moving average but then trying to get above it on 421 this was the the thing that changed it all we couldn't get above we rejected and then we came down hard ran up into the 21 rejected again got above the 21 we'll put a little bit of short-term money to work here fail we'll take it back off we're willing to dip a couple toes in the water to see if the short-term trend improves as we did here. Nice run up here uh, from uh, mid-July through mid-August, but then we ran into this declining 200-day moving average, our long-term trend line, and the market said, that's it, you're going, not going any higher, and you can see how we've pulled back since then. Uh, the 21 day has rolled over and we broke the 50 day today. We sold the last of our SSO for about an 8% uh gain um we we took some off the entire way down here when we broke the 21 and now breaking the 50 we have a uh so what we what was a hedge uh is now really a directional play relative to the 50 day moving average and we still have four smaller positions we reduced the size of some of those today and i'll get into that momentarily so if you're interested in a trend following approach like this that to me is a common sense approach. After all, what other area of your life, if something uh, starts going bad, do you not take action? Why should your why should your investments be any different if you can uh, turn them over to somebody that can actually read what's going on in the market? Shoot me an email, Don at RevereAsset.com or phone 855 Real Wealth. That's 855 732 5932 if you'd like to discuss it further. So there's your SP 500, same situation with the NASDAQ 100. Uh, held on to the 50-day barely yesterday, but now broke below it. Close, uh, close, first close below it. This 300 area is a pretty big uh, support area. We really, uh, ideally, try to go sideways around here and try to form a base, but um, that's the the I, I would say the odds are uh, on the let's say below 50% that that's going to happen. Right now, we're always looking at probabilities and possibilities. There are no absolutes in the market. We weigh the evidence and react accordingly. Here's the Dow Jones Industrial Average decisively breaking below the 50-day moving average. Mid-caps and small caps are still hanging above. Uh, Mid-caps, 1.1% uh, above the 50-day. Small caps, 1% above the 50-day. So, uh, see what happens here, but uh, if you've been listening, you uh, you watch us comment on the market uh, every day, uh, good, bad, or ugly, um, and we're indifferent. We uh, we don't hope. Hope is not uh, an investment approach. You uh, you need to react to what in actuality is going on, especially if you're repro uh, approaching retirement. So those are the indexes. Let's bring up the tail of the tape here and do a quick review of where we are overall dollar. Okay, overall headwinds, strong dollar inflation, uh, Fed tapering and balance sheet reduction, interest rates rising, Russia-Ukraine war. Add on to that some negative technical indicators. The dollar at a six-week high. The NASI, this is the McClellan Summation Index, hooked down from overbought. That is a sell signal. And the five major indexes, daily stochastics, are pointing lower. Uh, from a sentiment standpoint, I did not update this. But since I can pause, put call at 1.2. That's elevated. VIX at 26, really not up all that much today considering uh, the decline in the indexes fear and greed dropped to 49 that's still neutral operating under the bear case now with uh, three closes lower after uh, breaking the 21 uh, some news this morning and the market actually sold off on this news uh, consumer confidence better than expected and July job, uh, July job openings were over uh, a million above estimates this is not indicating a slowing economy. This is not indicating that people are spending less and those things are required to create demand destruction to bring inflation down. So any good economic data is going to be seen as uh, the Fed's got to continue raising rates to battle inflation, uh, despite the fact that New York Fed President Williams came out very hawkish today, reiterating what Jerome Powell said late last week. Uh, we'll be looking ahead Friday to the jobs report to see what happens there. So expectations coming into today were neutral, 
Uh, I'd say they were negative because of Powell's hawkishness and slightly positive because of the bounce above the the bounce at the 50-day moving average yesterday. But that given away, uh, expectations negative for tomorrow now with the three big indexes breaking below their 50-day moving average. Support and resistance on the NASDAQ 100 and the S&P broke also. Uh, let's talk about some sectors today. The dollar started up, ended up mildly uh, negative, so we can take the dollar off there. TLT up barely. I, I've got 11 out of 11 sectors uh, negative here. Normally, I signify that like this. Uh, as far as relative strength on sectors, really not much. The best, the best was um, financials down a half a percent, so broad selling across the board. Oils hit particularly hard today as there was a report out that uh, some of the European countries think they have enough gas stored to get through the winter. Okay, if you say so, fellas. Um, your energy policies have, been, have brought complete destruction to the European economy. Uh, let's take a look at uh, USO. Uh, USO breaking below its 50-day moving average, uh, down 4% on the day. Let's look at the big oil uh, sectors. XLE with a gap down, not broken, still above the 21. Uh, nobody likes taking big hits when you're in oil and gas. And uh, a lot of down 3, 4, 5, 6, 7% today on the leading stocks in that sector. XLP is oil producers, down 5% on the day. That was the one that took the big hit, but note, um, every time uh, over the last month it's gotten to the 21-day moving average, it's just bounced. So uh, today's low will be pretty key. How about oil services? OIH also down 5%, sitting right on the 21-day exponential moving average. Commodities, in addition to the oils, were weak today. That's pretty typical. Um, Fertilizers weak, coals weak, uh, XME and steel. Uh, a lot of these had been setting up very nicely, and if these were the survivors in your portfolio, that's the equivalent of uh, the police hauling off the piano player after they raid the house of ill repute. So uh, let's take a look at some of these stocks that were on the focus list coming into today and see how they responded. CMG, I've had my eye on this for a while. I regretted not getting into it uh, after it got above its 20, uh, 200 day moving average, pulling back nicely, closing right on the 21 day moving average. If the market was better, I would be buying this, but alas, the market uh, is not in a good frame of mind right now. CEG, this one holding up very good. This is a, a alternative energy play. Uh, next up, GFS. GFS, one of the rare green stocks on my watch list today as it bounced at the 21, putting in a nice little handle here uh, coming up the right side. Uh, definitely a standout on my list today. Lithium stocks have been doing very well. LTHM down 1% today, uh, holding the 8 EMA. So that one's looking pretty good. But you know what's not looking pretty good? Uh, CF after today. Uh, all the way down to its 21. So failed breakout here triggers the buy minus uh, the pivot minus 7% as it's down 6.5% on the day. And add Nucor to that. Uh, steel stock had been putting in a nice little handle here, closed below the 21, down 3% today. Steel Dynamics even worse. Uh, closed right on the 21, broke out of a cup and handle. This again would have uh, triggered the pivot minus 7%. I'm, I'm not a big fan of just the flat pivot minus 7% because of the wide ATRs uh, of stocks. I've talked about that uh, quite a bit, but um, so I don't, I, I really don't, don't follow. It's not that I don't follow it, that I'm not aware of it, but um, my my position sizing might allow me to take a 10% loss and still not uh, hit the maximum that we uh, are the maximum that we want to lose on an overall portfolio position, which is 0.2% from the initial buy. Uh, last one, last chart I want to look at TBT. This goes up as interest rates go up. Uh, some tight action recently here, right around the 8 EMA. Uh, seems like it might be a good buying opportunity, but money's flowing into TLT. Uh, this is forcing rates down 
while it's forcing uh, some price, the price action to uh, outperform. Uh, but the, the yield curve is inverting and inverted quite a bit. So uh, that's supposed to be a sign of recession, but who knows what the definition of recession is anymore, right? So uh, portfolio changes today. We dropped our adjusted beta from 0 0.52 to 0 0.17 by selling SSO on that break of the 50-day moving average. And we trimmed half of our WOLF, W-O-L-F, and as much as anything, this is just a, uh, when you're in a market, you have to protect your cost basis. We were getting close to break even on uh, some of the buy. So we trimmed half of it. We, we, when the market is uh, precarious, you got to protect your cost basis at all costs. Do not let things that are positive go negative. You also have to consider what is the gap between the first resistance or support area and the next resist uh, the next support area and in this case from the 8 to the 21 it's another 13 percent down uh, something you definitely have to take into consideration in my opinion uh, we did not trim shockwave um, sorry we did trim shockwave uh, with the break, with the close below the ADMA, it was LNG that we didn't uh, trim. We also trimmed Exxon as our second buy. First buy was 4%, second buy was 2%, second buy went negative, therefore we sold it. And um, LNG, let's take a look at this, down big early in the day. You can see this, this is the type of candle you want to see. This is a supporting candle. Undercut the 21, reclaim the 21, closed in the upper uh 60 upper two-thirds of its range that's a nice uh shakeout undercut and reclaim of the 21 for lng that's still our largest position at uh 6.4 percent so as i said beta reduced to 0 0.7 percent bottom line third day down big cap index is breaking below their 50-day moving average let's take a look at resistance and support levels here uh, next level down is the July support and resistance area around 39.20 on the S&P 500. Let's bring that up. Uh, and you can see in July here, uh, this 3,900 to 39.20 area, we, we battled it here in June, tried to get above it here in June, uh, went back and forth between from 7.18 to uh, the last week in July, acting as uh, support on the way down after we broke above it uh, on 719. So that's the next area down 3920-ish uh, uh, that I would be keeping an eye on. How about some individual stocks uh, today? Let's see. So Plug initially had a 6% gap up, ended up uh, down a percent on the day. A uh, lot of negative reversals like this the last couple of days. First Solar had a big gap up on some news that they're building a plant, that reverse still close positive, but um, in a market like this, strength is sold. So if you're buying something, it better not be a breakout. At best, you better uh, buy it at support, hope that support holds and you can squeeze a couple of percent out of it. That's just the type of market uh, that we're in now. I mentioned GFX was strong, ENVX, uh, a good day today, up 3.83%. Uh, CCJ as uranium continues to be a lot of chatter about uh, restarting uranium, uh, restarting nuclear power plants and designing nuclear power plants. Relative strength at a new high. Uh, second strong day for CCJ. Actually, probably the looks like one, two, three, four out of the last five days, starting with this big gap up when Japan first announced that they were restarting their nuclear plants on 824. Uh, leading CCJ to uh, really be a standout. On the downside, Baidu initially uh, was up on earnings, did not finish up on earnings, finished down 6.5%. Uh, I, I already mentioned CF fertilizer stock weak, Mosaic down 5%. Also weak, Bros has been very volatile. This is uh, the ugly side of a earnings gap up that gets sold off. We got stopped out uh above the 21 here and uh now breaking the 21 look how it rolled over and turned into resistance as it could not get back above it each of the last three days that's a sell signal and then finally breaking below the 50-day moving average today down 7.6 percent 
uh, coal stocks. Here's Arch down 10% on the day. Actually, it's not as bad. They have a special dividend here, so it's not a true 10%. Some of that gap down was a dividend. Uh, AMR, another coal stock, uh, down 5% on the day. That's going to wrap it. As always, love to hear from you. Email is Don at RevereAsset.com. The phone is 855-REAL-WEALTH. That's 855-732-5932. Danny Stewart, Re Revere President and CFA, will answer that and uh, would love to talk to you about your finances. So give us a shout. That's going to wrap it uh, tomorrow, the last day of August, and then we go into historically the worst month of the year for stocks, September, not coming at a very good time, but um, as usual, we'll take it one day at a time and react accordingly to the signals that the market is giving us. So wrapping up, Tuesday, 8.30, this is Don Vandenborg with Just the Facts. Remember, it's not how much you make in the market, it's how much you can keep. Thanks for listening and have a great day.